Hey class, Miss Anderson here. Today we're gonna learn how to graph sine and cosine. So first let's do a quick review for the unit circle. Remember the unit circle is a circle with a radius one. And the circular definitions are gonna help us to graph our sine and cosine function. So first let's review our circular definitions. So just if we take any point here in the first quadrant where our radius is connected, that is an x, y point, like it could be five, seven. In general, it's x, y. We make this into a right triangle. This would be our x distance, this is our y distance, and this is our radius. And then our angle is always our central angle and so our angle is there. So then labeling our sides to get our circular definition across from the angle, remember, is your opposite side. Touching the angle is your adjacent side, and then always across from the 90 degrees is your hypotenuse. And so you get the definitions, and the hypotenuse, or the radius here, remember, is equal to one. So we'll label that one, and the one is what we'll use for our hypotenuse. So we get our circular definitions by saying like sine of our angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of our angle is y over r. r is 1, so sine is y. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over r. If r is 1, then cosine is x. And then tangent is y opposite over adjacent, which then becomes sine over cosine, which is a fun fact, but we will use that one a little bit less in the graphing. We're only going to learn to graph sine and cosine, and we're gonna use the unit circle. So cosine corresponds to the x coordinates and sine corresponds to the y coordinates. And then if the unit circle has a radius of one, then the points along the x and y axis are our, called our quadrantal angles. So at zero degrees, we would have the point zero, or one zero, be at zero degrees. At 90 degrees, we have the point zero one. At 180 degrees, you'd have the point negative one zero. And then at 270 degrees, the point would be zero, negative one. So they're all one away from the origin. So one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, zero, negative one. And then we're gonna remember that the X coordinates are going to correspond to the cosine values and the Y coordinates are gonna co correspond to the sine values. And that's what we're gonna use to graph our sine and cosine. We're gonna graph one period for sine and cosine. It starts at zero degrees, and then the value along the x-axis will correspond to the angle measurements. So we'll graph at 90, 180, 270, and 360, except for that we're going to be doing these in radians. And so in radians, this is gonna be zero, then that's pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then back to two pi. So when we graph sine and cosine, we're gonna be graphing one full revolution around the circle, and that's gonna make one full cycle. So typically, a sine and cosine has a period of two pi, because that's how long it takes to get around the circle, 360 degrees or two pi radians, and then it's gonna start repeating itself. So sine and cosine are gonna have a pattern that's going to be like waves and it will repeat itself. And it repeats itself once it gets around the circle one full time. So we're gonna start with the graph of the sine wave. Sine wave in general is A sine of BX. A is called our amplitude. The absolute value of A, so the positive version of A, is the height of our wave. Our period is gonna be found by doing two pi divided by B. So B is gonna be inside the function with the X, and it's two pi divided by B because if we change this, um, typical period is two pi, and if we change the B, then we, make the, we change the frequency. And then, 
because we are counting, we're cutting this into one, two, three, four equal fourths. So if we change the period, we'll change what we count by on the X scale. So you take your period and cut it into equal fourths to change what you're counting by. The domain for the sine wave is all real numbers because we can plug in any value along here. And then the range, the amplitude, will, the range, the y values will bounce between a negative a and an a. So let's just start by graphing the parent function. So I'm going to throw on my unit circle. You need the four main points. So you need the points 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. And then you are graphing the sine function. So you're going to be looking at the y coordinates specifically, starting at 0 and going counterclockwise. So we start at 0, and then we're going to have our first point at pi over 2, and then at pi, and then at 3 pi over 2 and then back to 2 pi. So if we take this circular pattern and we put it on a linear graph, that's going to be our x's, so that's going to be our inputs. Then when we do sine of 0 degrees, your output's going to be 0 because we get that from our unit circle point. Sine corresponds to the y-coordinate. So sine of 0 is 0. Then sine of 90 or pi over 2 is going to be 1. And we're moving in the counterclockwise direction. Sine of pi, or 180 degrees, if you input that, it's going to be 0. And then sine of 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2, is going to be negative 1. And then back to sine of 2 pi, which is again at 0. So then that's our original parent function pattern. So we can start by, here's our 0, right here would be 0, 0, and then we got pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then our first point, our a value is just 1, so our typical sine curve goes between zero, 1 and negative 1. So our range for this one is going to be from negative 1 to 1. So we're going to graph the point 0, 0, then pi over 2, 1, then pi, 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and then back to 0. And then we could continue this. Now, sine does continue infinitely and in both directions. So you could go the reverse way over here, and you would have the same pattern again. Or you could continue going this way, and you're counting by pi over 2s. So this one's 4 pi over 2. Your next one would be at 5 pi over 2, etc. And then sine will continue infinitely like that forever. It will continue going around this circle 360 degrees with the same pattern over and over and over. So the sine wave, and we just graphed one period of it, which is right here. So just one cycle. And we could continue on if we needed. Okay, The parent function for cosine is going to be very similar. We have our a changes our amplitude or our height of our wave. Notice our wave heights were 1. That corresponded to our a value. Um, our period again, the frequency is our b value. So when we change the frequency, that changes the wavelengths. So right here is our typical b equals 1. But if we changed it and we could increase our b value so that our waves would get longer, so our frequency, or if you thought about it as sound, would be slower. Or we could increase our frequency so that it was much quicker and that would happen if we change the b value so changing the b value increases the tempo or slows it down or <clears throat> speeds it up so for cosine 
we have, we're going to graph the parent function to start, which is just y equals cosine of x. So our a value here, would our amplitude would be 1. Our period is just 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. And that means we're going to be counting by 2 pi split into 4s is going to be pi 2 pi over 4, pi over 2. Same as the one I did in the sine function, but I don't know if I explained that very well the first time. And so because we have the parent function, we are using just our general unit circle where we're starting at 0, and that's the point 1, 0. And then we are at pi over 2, which is the point 0, 1. And then pi, which is the point negative 1, 0, 3 pi over 2, which is our point 0, negative 1, and then back to 2 pi. So we're counting by pi over twos, which is the standard two pi radian measurement around the circle. So to count by pi over twos, we go zero, pi over two, two pi over two, which is pi, three pi over two, and four pi over two, which is two pi. And then this time we're graphing cosine, so it's the x coordinates. So at zero, cosine is equal to one, and then at, we're going counterclockwise, so at pi over 2, the x-coordinate is 0. And then at pi, my x-coordinate is negative 1. And then at 3 pi over 2, my x-coordinate is 0. And then back to 2 pi. So we go all the way around, back to 2 pi, my x-coordinate is 1. And so cosine is going to look like this. Our amplitude is 1, so we're going to be bouncing between 1 and negative 1, so I don't need that third column for A. And I'm counting by pi over 2, so pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then cosine starts at 0, 1, then 0, pi over 2, 0, pi, negative 1, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi back up to 1. So when you graph one cycle of cosine, it kind of looks more like this U shape. But similar to pi, it does continue infinitely. So if you were to continue to graph it, it would end up looking very similar to the sine curve. It is essentially the same thing, except for that cosine starts at 0, 1, where sine starts at 0, 0, and then goes like this. So cosine starts here and then goes down. So if you graph just one period, which is from 0 to 2 pi, typically it ends up looking kind of like a U. Now we can adjust a few things for our different graphs. And if you want to just practice the basics, sine and cosine, that's a good place to start. But we're going to adjust a few things for, for our graphing. So here we're going to do sine of 1 half sine of 2x. So this time we have an a value of 1 half. So absolute value of 1 half is 1 half, which means that my waves, instead of going from 1 to negative 1, are only going to go up to 1 half and negative 1 half now. So they're going to be shrunk. And amplitude is kind of like the loudness. If you relate it back to sound waves, so if we increase the amplitude, you're going to increase the volume. So if you decrease the amplitude, you're decreasing the volume. And then we have, this is my A, and then this is my BX. So we have a B of 2. So typically my period is 2 pi over B. This one's going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is going to be a period of pi. So that means we've increased our frequency. We've actually doubled it because typically you go all the way around the circle in 2 pi, and this one is going all the way around the circle and um, twice as fast. So it's going to make a full circle and when it gets from here to here it's only going pi radians instead of two pi radians. So in the typical curve looks like this, this one will be twice as fast. So twice as fast. Which means we're going to have to change what we're counting by. So we're going to take our pi over 1, our period, and split it into equal 4. So we're going to be counting by pi over 4s instead of pi over 2s. So we're going to start at 0. Then we're going to go pi over 4. That's going to be our first one, 1 pi over 4. Then it's going to be 2 pi over 4, which is actually pi over 2. That'll be here. Then 3 pi over 4, which is down here now. 
and then four pi over four, which is gonna be pi. So we count it by pi over four. So one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four. And then we're graphing sine. So we're gonna be looking at the y coordinates. Sine is the y coordinate on the unit circle. So one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, and zero, negative one are my points. So sine is gonna go zero, one, zero, negative one, and then back to zero. So zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. So they're not quite as spread out this time because I'm counting by pi over four. So we're gonna have pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, and pi. And then we could graph our one cycle. Um, our a value is a half this time, so one half times y. So our middle column times a half, zero times a half is still zero, one times a half is a half, zero, negative a half, zero. And then we're graphing the first and last column. So sine starts at zero, zero, then pi over four, that was supposed to say, and one half and then pi over two, zero, three pi over four, and negative one half, and pi zero. So there's one full cycle. If I wanted to graph the full two cycles for two pi, you could continue by counting by pi over fours. So pi, four pi, five pi over four, six pi over four, which reduces seven pi over four, and eight pi over four, which is two pi, and then the pattern would start over again. It would go one half, zero, negative one, one half. So here's our typical two pi period, but we have actually doubled the frequency by changing the B value. So there's actually two full curves of sine in that one, um, in that one graph. But this is all we're gonna need to graph is just that one period. So in this case, from zero to pi. The domain stays the same. We can plug in any value of x. We could graph to the left two negative um, values, and then we can continue infinitely in the right. The range, however, is your outputs, and we're bouncing between negative one-half and positive one-half, and those are included values. And so we have the square brackets to show that those are included. Okay, a couple more. So this one, we are increasing our height of our wave. So we have an amplitude of two. And then we are taking our frequency and we are cutting it in half. So we have our typical period is two pi. This is our B. So we take two pi and divide it by a half. That's actually going to be two pi times the reciprocal. So we're going to get four pi. So now instead of making a whole circle and making that in two pi, it is making that in four pi. So it's actually taking two times as long to get there instead of twice as fast it's taking two times as long because dividing by a half makes it two times as much so to figure out what you're counting by you're going to take your period four pi over b or four pi over one times one fourth and you're going to get four pi over four which is just pi so that means you're counting by pies. So zero, I always start at zero. Then it's like one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. Around your circle, that's one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. That's one full cycle. It's sine again, so it's the y coordinates. So like one zero, zero one, negative one zero, and zero, negative one. The y coordinates, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, back to 0. So the pattern for a sign, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And then our a value out front was 2, so the middle column times 2. So 0, 2, 0, negative 2, 0. So when I'm graphing here, it, before I was bouncing between 1 and negative 1, but I'm actually going to be going all the way up to 2 this time. And then I'm counting by pies. 
So this one is really elongated. So pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. And so my graph is gonna look like this, zero, zero, pi, all the way up to two, two pi, back to zero, three pi down to negative two, and four pi back to zero. So this is a very, a little bit louder and a little bit slower, if you wanna re relate it back to music for a wave. So my amplitude has increased, my height of my wave is two, and my frequency has taken twice as long to go the same distance. So instead of making it a full circle in two pi, it's now taken four pi. My domain is still all real numbers. I could plug in any value along the x-axis, negative infinity to infinity, but my outputs range from um, negative two to positive two. All my outputs are between those values. So my range is including, so square brackets, negative two to two. All right, we're gonna do one more. Cosine negative three cosine of pi x. So here my amplitude is gonna be three. The absolute value of negative three is three. My absolute value is always, or my amplitude will always be positive. The negative means it's going to be reflected. And the three increases that amplitude. It's also considered to be that vertical stretch. This time my B value is pi, so it typically takes me two pi radians to get all the way around. This time it's gonna be two pi divided by pi, so my period is just gonna be two. So all the way around my circle from zero, and then I'm gonna end at two radians, which is a little bit tricky because you're used to seeing pi in your radians, but remember two pi is actually 6.28 radians. So this time, instead of taking 6.28 radians, it's just taking two radians. So it is doing it about 3.14 times as fast as normal. So 3.14 times as fast as it typically takes to make it around the circle. So we're going from zero radians to two radians. And that means we're gonna take, take two and cut it into equal fours. So that's gonna be two fours, which is one half, which means you're counting by one half radians. So zero will be one half, two halves will be one, three halves, and then four halves will be two. So one half, one, three halves, two radians. So instead of pi over two radians, it's just a half radian. Instead of pi radians, here it's just one radian. So instead of 3.14 radians, one radian. Okay, and then we're graphing cosine. So we want the x coordinates on our circle. So this is one, zero. This one's zero, one. This one's negative one, zero. This one's zero, negative one. And we want the x coordinates. So one, zero, negative one, zero, back to one. So cosine's pattern is one, zero, negative one, zero, one. So starting at zero and going counterclockwise, the x coordinates back to two radians. And then our a value is negative three. So this is actually gonna reflect all my points and stretch it vertically because I'm gonna take my y coordinates times negative three. So negative three, zero, positive three, zero, negative three. So I'm going to have my graph one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And then along my axes, it's gonna be like three times as fast, so they're gonna be kind of close together, I'm counting by like one half, one, three halves, two. And so I'm graphing zero, negative three to start, then one half zero, then one, three, so I'm graphing like one, three, then pi over two, or three pi, uh, I always wanna say pi, three halves back to zero, and then two is down to negative three.
And the cosine, one cycle of cosine typically looks like a U. So this one ends up being kind of like an upside down U. And then if you continued, it would continue to make these very high loops. Your domain is still all real numbers. You can pick any value for X and plug it in, but you will always get a value of Y between negative three and positive three included. So between these two for your outputs. So you could plug in any value for theta and radians along the x-axis, but you only get these values as your y values for this function. Okay. Just a couple going backwards real quick. So if you want to decide if these are sine or cosine, we're going to look at where it starts. So this one starts at 0, 4. So that means it's a cosine function because cosine starts at zero, one, and sine starts at zero, zero. So if you look at like your unit circle and you look at the very first point here, it's one, zero, this is cosine, this is sine, and this is at zero degrees. So if this is zero degrees here, zero radians, radians or degrees, cosine's at one, sine's at zero. So this one is a cosine function. But since it starts at 0, 4 instead of 0, 1, that means the amplitude is 4. This one over here would be a sine function because it starts at 0, 0. Then it typically goes between 1 and negative 1, but this one is has a maximum of a half. So that means your A value is 1 half. And then around the unit circle, we always go, like cosine goes, one and then zero, then negative one, then back to zero, and then back to one. So cosine is typically the x coordinates or is the x coordinates. And so if we graph those here, we'd go one, zero, negative one, zero, one. That is one full cycle. So this is gonna tell me where my period is. So if this is zero to here, it looks like we are counting it looks like this is pi over 2, so this is pi over 4. So pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, which means that my period would be um, pi. So this is halfway, so right here would be pi, and that would be my end of my cycle. Typically, it's 2 pi divided by b equals pi, your period, which means that b had to be equal to 2. So my graph or my equation for this one would be 4 cosine of 2x. So it's going to take some practice to do that, but picking out those key points. Over here, this one starts at 0, 0, which is how we knew it was a sine, because sine at 0 radians is 0 degrees. And then sine goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So if I want to find where it ends, I count those out. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So one full period is right here. So it's pi over 4. This would be 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, or no, just 1 fourth. <laughs> 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, which would be 1. So this one has a period of 1. So if 2 pi divided by b equaled 1, that means that b had to have been 2 pi. And then we figured out our height of our wave, which was 1 half. So we put that out front. And then it's sine of bx inside. So then that would be our equation for sine and our equation for cosine. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. The first video started off a little rough, but we got there.